Okay, guys. This is it. Um, okay. Got the questions here. Okay, I'm going to be interviewing Matt Black. <sighs> I've waited a few weeks for this. <sighs> I'm going to send the message. And that will be it. Hi, Matt Black. Hi, how's it going? I just need to change this. One second here. Hi, can you hear me? Uh, hello. Hi. Hi, how's it going? It's it's good. Um, it, it's great to be talking to you. Uh, yeah, it's nice to meet you too. Um. Okay, so I have a list of questions to ask okay. you, but before I did that, I wanted to ask, am I allowed to record this? Uh, yeah, sure, if you, if you want to, yeah, okay. why not? And am I allowed to share it as well, or you could look um, over it first? Before yeah, I... yeah, like if you, yeah, I wouldn't mind... You know, as long as you don't sort of edit it and like make me look mad or something, then no, no, no. <laughs> I, I I don't think I would really edit it. I would just it would just be that. Whatever yeah, that's cool with me. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Okay. Um. So my first question was, what what led you to becoming a composer? <clears throat> um. That's a good question. I think I was always into music and I think from a young age like I enjoyed listening to and and then sort of ultimately playing instruments like I I started to learn like the piano and the cello when I was I guess about 7 or 8 um and like my dad played music and there were lots of musical instruments in our house when I was growing up and then also my mum's parents were both musicians. So the kind of, you know, there was there was a lot of music around um, when I was a kid. And so it was something that I just enjoyed doing. And then it was only really, I guess, being a, a composer as such was after I finished school and finished university and sort of try to work out exactly what I wanted to do with music because I guess there's so many different ways that you could be a musician you could be a you know a session musician or you could um be a, a performer or whatever um but it took me a while to go oh yeah actually I really like composition and and, and focus in on that so I guess yeah leaving university probably was when I decided that was what I was going to try and do. Was was game composing always what you were planning to do or No, not really. I mean like or, or I like, always maybe not planning, but like when you got out of school then when you started thinking about becoming a composer, was it Not really. It wasn't it wasn't really on my uh, sort of horizon as such I I knew I mean I loved playing games I loved the music in the games that I'd been playing um, you know right from when I sort of when I was a kid up to in my 20s I, I, I still liked video game music then but I never even considered it as a as a, even a career um, or something that you could do I wanted to write music um, full stop and then I uh, luckily i i sort of became more aware of it <clears throat> more aware of it as a as an option of a thing to do um and then there was a, a company called blitz games who were looking for an audio designer 
and I applied for the job and luckily enough I got the job and I was kind of hired to do music at that stage and that's where it started. So did you really compose for anything before you ended up in Blitz Games? Um, I'd done like some very small bits of film and animation as part of a course, as part of a master's degree that I did in, in Bournemouth University. So I'd, I'd done a lot of sort of practice, but I think in terms of paid work, I think Blitz was probably my first, my first job um, as, a, as a composer. Um, I'd done work as, as a sort of, as a musician, as a gigging musician, as a guitarist, um, and, and sort of being paid to sort of play on, on people's songs and things like that. But yeah, Blitz was probably the first time that I was being paid as a composer. Um, what, what was the first game that you composed for at Blitz Games? Uh, uh, that the first game that I did music for was um, was Zapper. Oh, that that um, was the one. Yeah, yeah, that was the first one. And um, so when I started, I I did I did some work on um, on a few other games that I actually I don't think got released. And I was doing some sound effects work. Um, but then Zappa was the first one when I, I, I sort of was given the opportunity to, to do a bit of music. And that was maybe, I don't know, like three months after starting there. Um, and I think I, I seem to remember it was quite daunting because I hadn't. I hadn't done like um, like the title track before. That was a that was like a big thing. Um, yeah. And I, and I had to do that. Yeah, Zappa was the first one. So I, I was kind of curious because um, for what it seems, almost all the music you've made doesn't really get released properly as albums or anything. Yeah. So how is it composing music that never really gets released? Does that really affect how you feel about it or? Um, no, it doesn't particularly affect how I feel about it because, I mean, the main way that people would listen to any of any of that music is through playing that game and the music was written to accompany the game, you know, to be to be part of that whole package. Um, especially especially the music that's got different layers and, and then, you know, it changes depending on what you're doing in the game it's very much part of that experience that i always feel is is kind of what the music was designed for so that's where i feel yeah that's fine people are hopefully going to appreciate it and listen to it there um and at the time i mean like back in the sort of the, the days of zappa yeah like game soundtracks were released but it wasn't a regular thing it wasn't a bigger thing as it is now, um, that's for sure. So it was, it wasn't something that we we expected to happen. I suppose. Oh, I'd quite like them to be released. I'm quite up for that. <laughs> like, uh, but. Yeah. Well, that that could be a possibility, because of so, something similar happened with a with another SpongeBob game, Battle for Bikini Bottom. It had never been yeah. released, and then, and then just a few years ago, it got released mm -hmm. as an album. So yeah. that that could be a possibility, at least for your SpongeBob work. I don't really. Yeah, yeah. Know much I mean, about it's the um, rights of Zapper. Um, I mean, it would probably be owned by the publisher, and they they would they own all the music for Zapper. They would make a decision if they want to release it or not. It's um, at that stage. It's not my decision, unfortunately. Um, let's see. So, I wanted to ask about how 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 was it working at Blitz Games? Was it 
It was good. Yeah. Yeah, no, it was um it was a really really uh, enjoyable experience. Um so when I started I knew John Gus Scott. Um he and I were at university together and uh and we ended up with quite a large audio department um with a, a bunch of people who've gone on to like do really really cool things um like talented very very talented people to work with it was quite inspiring um and it was it was good but and we we all sort of shared a room <clears throat> that's kind of not much bigger than the room I'm sort of currently sitting in now and we were kind of in corners wearing headphones like making all this music um and it's quite collaborative you'd like to sort of get you know Todd or John to listen to what you're doing and they'd like come up with some ideas uh and it was a good creative environment uh it was like, yeah lots of fun and th what I quite liked about blitz games as well was you'd work on a project and it would be relatively short you know the the game development cycle would be a year and a half to two years and the audio bit of it would maybe be a, I don't know, eight, nine months or something like that, depending on what the project was. And then you'd move on to the next thing, and the next thing might would be would be completely different, uh, a different kind of um, game, different bits of music that you have to write. So there's a lot of variety, a lot of creativity, and working in a, in a department with some really creative and talented people. It was good fun. I was kind of I was kind of thinking about what you said to me first about how you did some sound design for some mm -hmm. games that never got released. Were there any games that you did music for that didn't get released? Yeah, there's a few. Um, we did. We worked on the most obvious one I can think of is there was going to be a third fairly odd parents game. Um, and we started we started work on it. I think we got quite sort of far into it, probably like six, eight months of development time, maybe. Um, and there was quite a bit of music that I wrote for that. There was like one one level music and one kind of like special boss level um, music that I wrote. Uh, and then also we did a bunch of things where in the early development, uh, phase of a project you might do a sort of an example of the way that the game is going to look and you'd you'd pitch that to the publisher and they'd go yeah that's great and, but we'll, we'll change this and that so there was a we did a pac-man game eventually pac-man world 3 i think we did but the original pitch was like a completely different thing but it was like a one-off level and that had bespoke music created for it which never made it to the to the game itself because it was completely different um yeah so there, there were a few projects that either were kind of pitches which um i or todd or john maybe composed the music for um yeah that never saw the light of day so there's yeah there's a bunch of stuff kicking around somewhere it kind of makes me think about how like uh, i think Two or three years ago, somebody contacted some people who worked at Blitz Games and they got the original pitch document for Creature from the Krusty Krab. And that was huh. really interesting because the game was meant to be way, way different, way bigger, like th three times as big as the game ended up being. And so I was kind of curious if you ever really saw anything like that, if the game was very different when you first started working on it? Quite often, it would be quite different from the original pitch document. Um, uh, it's, I mean, I think most games, you know, you sort of, you give a pitch of like, it's going to be this big and it's going to feature, have a load of stuff, etc. cetera. Um, and then reality hits and you have to actually develop the thing. Um, it, I think it happened quite a lot. I don't remember that original pitch document, I have to say, for the Krusty Krab game. Uh, but, you know, that. But that's often the case. It's like, the you know, the pitch is this big shiny thing 
to get people interested in it and then the game is a, a slightly different slightly different beast when it's actually made there was i think i mentioned to this you mentioned this to you before that there was some music in creature from the crusty crab that was never used in the files that you shared mm. and there were there were seven tracks one of them ended up in atlantis mm -hmm. and a few bits and pieces of the other ones ended up in cutscene scores but mm. I, I actually wanted to ask you about those a little bit like could I could I ask you about each track? Maybe. Yeah, I'll try and uh, I'll try and try my best to answer. Uh, let me let me find it. Um, um. So the first one was. Well, that's a little too big to send. I need to make it a little smaller. So there was like a uh, a track for the level Revenge of the Giant Plankton Monster. Yep. Mm -hmm. And so the used one was called like Plankton Level Action. And then there was yeah, an yeah. unused one that was labeled as explore and that that okay. was this okay yeah i get it okay yeah i'm just going to play it in the background but play it quietly so i can hear you talk and so i do you remember what this was meant to be for at all so Just listen to it now yeah i mean so with that level music and kind of a, my approach at the time was to write <clears throat> you know sort of potentially three tracks for for each of the levels to have like the three different stages of like excitement like action normal and explore um on the basis that you know i think that probably the level design i can't remember if the level design changed slightly or if the gameplay changed slightly so therefore like the explore bit was no longer needed because it was just like a you're just running constantly trying to you know avoid being killed that is kind of how it is yeah and so maybe I genuinely can't remember if if originally the gameplay was going to be slightly different and therefore you could have had an explore track where he's just like hanging around and not doing anything. So maybe you could have the, the quieter music kick in there. Um, or I just wrote them by default because like once you've got the, the action version, it's kind of easy to start stripping things back and therefore get the explore version pretty quickly and um, i i suspect it might be that excuse me so i probably yeah i probably just sort of wrote it thinking it's going to be useful for something even though it didn't feature in the level it could then be reused later on for other bits and pieces so yeah so probably it was more because every other not every other most of the levels had that system of action normal explore so that was like the the system that we were using at the time yeah it was it was kind of like more towards the end of the game it stopped being like that but then towards the start of the game there was the, mm. the three levels yeah 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 the 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 same kind of thing happened for the other plankton level I was just 
that was labeled like level seven music. It, it was called It Came from Bikini Bottom. Mm -hmm. It had an explore track as well. Yeah. And it was very, very similar to this. Here's that. Mm-hmm. Good question. Yeah. This level is... It wasn't really the same as the level... Yeah, the I guess music. similar, similar sort of set of circumstances with that one. Well... So. You know, in, the, it in this been, level, it would have been written and, and and done at the time when doing the other ones, and then potentially it just wasn't needed within the level. So therefore, it's spare. It can be used for something else. Are oh, you frozen a bit, by the way? Oh, I. It's not good. Here, hold on. Let me disconnect and. Maybe that's done it. I don't know if you can still hear me. I'm going to disconnect and, and uh, ring you in again. Hi. Sorry, oh. for some reason you froze completely. I could. I heard you say that. But yeah. Maybe you but couldn't yeah. hear me. I don't know. Okay, but... Um. Sorry, yeah, so... That one, it came from uh, Bikini Bottom Explore. Um, I similar sort of set of circumstances then. So it was it was created as part of the original plan for the level. Possibly the level changed slightly, but then it's there, so it could be reused in different places. And then it, it was kind of a recurring thing because the same kind of thing happened for hypnotic highway as well mm. where it just had a, a a lower intensity but instead of it really sounding different it just kind of had the melody removed and that was it yeah yeah i think that that was um that was as i think that was like kind of done towards the end of the project when it's like like all starting to get a bit, you know, we need to finish all the music, get on with it. That's probably why <laughs> I just took the melody out and just did it and just removed that and used that as the, as the variation. I was starting to run out of time, I think. There was, I, I kind of had a question about Hypnotic Highway actually, because mm -hmm. it's kind of an, interesting track because it kind of sounds like it's split up into sections and then each section is meant to kind of reference the music throughout the game like the first part is kind of from the plankton levels and then the second mm. part is diesel dreaming sort of and yeah yeah it's kind of got a lot of yeah a lot of sort of references to the other other levels i think that's true and that, I mean, that does make sense because whether those references were were done sort of explicitly or not, it was definitely towards the end of the project. So it was sort of, it, it was easy to sort of take, well, I, I sort of take something that sounds a bit like this and I can use that here and something that sounds a bit like that. So that was the way that it was put together probably by referencing those other bits of music. It was, it was just kind of interesting because it kind of recapped the entire game mm -hmm. in one track. That was really neat. Yeah, so, cool. whether that was intentional or not, I don't know. But... I, to be honest, I don't think it was intended to be a summary of all of the music that had gone before. But I think it was by by where it came in the sequencing of writing that music. It happened to um, encompass all those previous bits. 
Actually, I also wanted yeah. to ask, kind of, you you said that Todd Baker played a little bit on Diesel Dreaming. That's correct. And yeah. because Hypnotic Highway had a section with like the same guitar, I was wondering, did he play on Hypnotic Highway as well? I I, th I don't think so. I think that's me playing. Um, I think Todd just did that one guitar solo in the uh, Diesel Dreaming track. Uh, and you can tell it's him because it's a lot better than my guitar solos. <laughs> but um, <laughs> um, but yeah, I think on, on the Hypnotic Highway, I think I did that. Uh, but probably inspired by Todd's solo and tried to do something a bit like the thing that he had done. I've just, I've kind of been trying to get the, the crediting down. Cause, so I also wanted to ask you, do you know what John Guscott really did on the music? Do you remember on at all? On the Bob game, um, I, it'd be easier to listen track by track, but I don't think... I'd hate to do a disservice and say he didn't do any of them. I don't think he was working on the music of that game. I'm fairly sure. Did he work on um, sound design, really? Or because he was on a he was on a different project at that point. I think. I think so. From my memory, essentially, I was doing the music, and Todd and Todd was doing the sound effects mostly on SpongeBob. Um, I think at the time, John might have been working on our, one of the karaoke revolution games that blitz did i think i'd have to i'd have to check and look back uh to be sure but i don't think john did music on the spongebob game i just because i i even i asked john guscott about it i got to talk to him sort of like this and i hmm. asked him about it and he said he couldn't really remember either, but it's just, it's so <laughs> strange because he's credited for the game. He's, he's put on the sound credits and, but he I told me around that time was when he was moving to Blue Tongue. Ah, oh, okay. So that's probably, yeah, yeah. So it probably was. So I think we'd started work on um, this game called um the, the karaoke game um and john was the the kind of audio lead on that and then kind of halfway through that project was when he moved a uh, company to to blue tongue to move to australia um that makes sense yeah and but in terms of the credits what we did back then everyone in the audio department was credited on every single game like regardless of who did the music specifically or who did the sound specifically the whole department was just credited because the whole department at one stage or another would have worked on on all on all of the games so it seemed like a kind of fair thing to do <clears throat> but it does mean like it's for people who are interested it's hard to know well who did the music and who did the sound and who wrote that it's piece a of music fuzzy it does specifics. yeah but yeah. So, because I just, because I didn't know, I just, I put John Guscott's name on every track. And yeah, yeah. Then for Todd Baker, I put him on the high intensity of Diesel Dreaming and then Hypnotic Highway, just in case. But, like you said, maybe um, it didn't work on Hypnotic Highway, so. I, I don't think he did. So I'll have probably... to remove his name from that and then um i th yeah i mean i i would have to listen to it again um and just double check but i i don't think he did and i'm, I'm fairly sure that john wasn't doing music on that spongebob game at that time then i might remove his name from the tracks too yeah uh, thank, <laughs> thank you <laughs> That's okay. I know, like you say, I do appreciate that it's confusing um, because, you know, I mean, at the time it didn't really seem that big a deal to to us working at Blitz. It was like, yeah, we, we all work in the audio department. We're all going to do bits and bobs on all of the games that go out. So, fine. 
and they didn't you know within the credits it's just a big list of people at the end it just says audio and there's it's just uh, everyone yeah. so it doesn't it doesn't um, list out yeah it doesn't list out the songs to say who did what I some more questions about creature from the crusty crab i kind of mm. wanted to ask kind of about the the starfish man track um yeah did you purposefully um so i think it's kind of meant to be based on the batman theme song sort of mm -hmm. and it's kind of interesting because in an older spongebob game battle for bikini bottom another a track from that also kind of took inspiration from that as well so did you purposefully kind of take inspiration from that song because a not like a track from battle for bikini bottom did or i think it would have been would have been part of the reference would have been part of the the various kind of reference points for that that piece of music um um yeah it was kind of batman um i guess because it was like a the, the sort of cartoon hero style thing of you know it, it made sense to go for that sort of big sound um I don't think was the, I'm not sure if the Incredibles was out at that time. I don't think it was actually, but it's in in that sort of area. Um, so yeah, it, I, the Bikini Bottom track probably would have been part of the overall reference. I, I also kind of wanted to ask about um, the Sponge Band tracks hmm. that. So <laughs> I, I was kind I was kind of curious. Um, at what stage were you making those? That was like right at the end of the project. Um, and it was quite sort of... It, I, I, I can't really remember if it was something that was initially planned, like right at the start of the project. I think it was something that sort of came up by, oh, well, we could use, you know, the controllers to do something with what should we do with it? they could control an instrument maybe um and then the idea for having a sponge band sort of came about um and it was it was kind of intended as just a bit of a, a silly throwaway extra that people could use like a bit of a like a toy almost like a musical toy that people could muck around with and so it was i yeah i created all the sort of the samples and stuff that people then triggered and then created a bunch of music sort of using those <clears throat> you created the the instrument sounds as well that you played mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah so i think i, I think there's like a, there was a, like a drum kit and a, um, a guitar maybe what else there was, was there yeah, i have those Actually, I, I never really knew if they were kind of stock sounds or if you made them, but there was a, a guitar, a flute, a trombone, oh, a yeah. drum kit, harmonica, yeah. maracas, oh, a harp, yeah. and synth. Just... Yeah. You know, the, I, they were they were created, I think, the like certainly the guitar and the percussion, they would have all been recorded live. And then everything else would have been sort of created using synthesizers and and samples. Um, the the drums. They were, the drums. Yeah, they were like dr drums, drum samples, I believe. Yeah, or maybe it was a. But did did you make the drum samples, or was it um, kind of like? I took them from probably an existing sample pack, I'd imagine, or they might have been my drum machine i can't quite remember if i'm honest with you <laughs> um but they would have been yeah like either so either they would have been like kind of library sort of drum uh sound effects or they would have been from a drum machine not quite sure 
one of the two options. But the guitar, certainly, I, I seem to remember recording the chords. Definitely the percussion would have been like original recording as well. Yeah, I just, I thought that the the Sponge Man um, tracks were really interesting because I mean, of course, it's, it's neat to kind of have the drums by themselves and then everything else without the drums. But then also some of them have like new parts in them. And um, I think Super Size Patty sounds completely different in Sponge Band. And one other specific thing I remember is Hypnotic Highway, the, the guitar solo was a different recording. Oh, yeah. it, was, it was kind of the same it was the same thing but it, it sounded a few things sounded a little different yeah yeah I, I can't quite remember um, how how that was put together and I guess it was just a different take and a different recording which is probably explains why why it's different there yeah and then uh, you said you you don't have those saved anywhere. Mm -mm. No, I'm afraid not. Um, there's probably somewhere, somewhere within someone's directory of Blitz Games stuff. There may well be, um, but I, I don't have them. I'm afraid. Um. Also, oh, one more thing about the the. Sponge Band tracks. Did yeah. you create the names that were used for the like Diesel Dreaming was called Lobster of the Pack and No, that wasn't yeah. me. That would have been that would have been probably one of the the people working in the game design side. Um I imagine it was someone called Jonathan Evans, in fact. It may not have been. But I um <laughs> <laughs> but the... <laughs> But um, no, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't name those. All right. I, I was kind of thinking, but maybe not. Okay. But there would have been because it was like lobster with a pack. That's obviously a, a pun. You know, they're all the, kind um, of sea life puns. Yeah, that's. We've got to yeah. get out of this place. With an yeah, the place was an eye. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was um, that was a, that was like a very much a Blitz Games, like if if a, a game designer who was normally the person who probably coming up with those names, they would always try and get a pun in. So, it doesn't surprise me that that's <laughs> that that's how they were named. Um. I, I wanted to ask, um, do you have stems saved for the tracks? No, um, I have essentially the same, the same stuff that you've probably listened to and got now, which is just the, the, the sort of rendered files as they are, the explore version and et cetera, et cetera. So I don't have those um, individual stems. Um, were Creature from the Krusty Krab and Atlantis made kind of near, near each other? Yeah, they, they were sort of, I'd have to look at the dates when they came out, but yeah, they were sort of possibly within, you know, a two year gap or a one year gap or something there, like Well, that. there was like a two year gap, but I mean like in development were you like working on them at the same time or no no we'd, we'd finish one and then then move on to the on to the next one and i can't quite remember if there was a project in between that i ended up doing or if it was just straight on to the next spongebob game um but they were pretty close in development at least i just say because there's some music that's reused and of course same samples it sounds like are used on mm both games music mm 
Um, did anybody else help you with Atlantis's music? <clears throat> on the title track, um, the one that plays on the main menu, uh, there's um, I hired a singer, and that's a real um, person. Yeah, so there's there's like a female um, vocal part in there, and that's a that's a real person singing alongside some uh like sort of samples as well so it's kind of a mix of the two things um and do you maybe think would... Ed... sorry go on no do you think it would be appropriate for you to share that person's name for credit or it i sh she probably should have got a credit um but uh, at the time, that didn't happen. I mean, uh, I think because it was such a small sort of bit, um, and I genuinely can't remember um, her, na her name now, unfortunately. Um, yeah. And then I'm not sure if Ed Hargrave, um, who was in the audio department at the time, he might have played violin. Maybe that was on Krusty Crab. Yeah, on the on the title on the yeah on the title track. I, I don't think there was any violin uh, in Atlantis. This title, yeah, at it must least, but... must be crusty crusty crab then I think. Um, and again, mm, uncredited. Edward Edward Har Hargrave was it? Hmm. So. Uh, yeah, Ed was in the audio department at Blitz. Um, uh, he's a hugely talented sound designer and musician. Works in, in games still. He's working on, on dreams for Media Molecule at the moment. I wanted to ask something else about Atlantis. Um, so in, in Creature from the Krusty Krab, pretty much every cutscene got an original score. But in Atlantis, all of it was kind of reused level music. So yeah. why was that? I think that was just a time issue. Like when we, when we got around to doing the credits... Yeah, I'm a bit hazy with exactly which project I had to move on to. But I, I think I had to move on to something else and basically had run out of time to do any um, sort of original compositions and score for the cutscenes. So I seem to remember that the cutscenes, the, the sound design of them was, um, I think... A lot of it was done by Stuart Duffield, who was working at Blitz at the time. Um, I've heard that name before. Hmm, he, I think he's in the credits at least. Yeah. Um, and I think it was a case of, yeah, let's reuse level music, than rather than do original compositions for the for the cutscenes. And I think it was, excuse me, mostly because I'd had to move on to something else at the time, and I can't remember what what that project was but that's that's kind of what happened at blitz is like we seem to put out a lot of games quite quickly like I was, like I was saying earlier it was it was a fun thing because you'd like you do one project quite intensely for a number of months and then quickly move on to the other but i suppose the flip side of that was that like you didn't in some cases you didn't have a lot of time to work on things it was just like yeah quickly get it done move on to the next project which is i i suspect what happened there i guess, I guess that makes sense since um there was a little bit of reused music from creature from the crusty crab as well yeah you know? yeah i was also kind of curious about the specifics of the atlantis music um, it, 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 this kind of came from the cutscenes as well, but all of the, all of the cutscenes are 
kind of in 48,000 hertz or 48 kilohertz mm -hmm. and there's some parts where it's just music and that in the spectrum all gets all the way up there so I was curious did you create Atlantis's music at 48 kilohertz um possibly not i possibly i would i'd be working at down at 44.1 i think back then i can't like so that's how creature can't. on the crusty crab was but yeah because the, i mean the cutscenes showed it being that high mm -hmm. yeah it's To be honest with you, I am not entirely sure. I, I mean, I at some point I switched over to using 48K and 24-bit as like the standard um, kind of format that I would always render out audio files in. And so those would, it wouldn't be, I don't know if that was then or if that was slightly after then, to be honest with you. <laughs> but... Um, it po it's quite possible that I was working at 48k then. I'm not sure. Is there, I guess, do you have the files to check? Again, mm, no. I think, I think you've probably sort of seen most of them. I think I've sent some of them to yourself, um, or possibly all of them even. Uh, so not they for would Atlantis. Have, they, not from Atlantis. Oh, okay. Somebody. I'll have. I I know my friend named Sheriff the Great. Oh yeah. Has been asking you about it, and you said you haven't really had the time, but. Okay. Um. Hmm. I'm not sure. Then I. I certainly don't have the original, like kind of stems. And of those, course, those of course, but... what I don't have is that. But I thought I had the um, the game music, so I'll, I'll look into that. Please do, um, <laughs> because the the thing about Atlantis too is that um, the music kind of had the uh, the ambience baked into it. Yeah, and so yeah. it's kind of not. I like it's yeah, still enjoyable can't... to listen to, but not really. You can't really hear much. it properly. Yeah, no, I get it. So it would um, be really nice to have the original files if you have them. Mm hmm Yeah, I'll I'll see if I'll see you um see if I've got them and have a look. Um and then and I'll let you know. But yeah, sort of I mean we did keep each of the for each game we did like we're sort of trying to sort of back everything up with the project. So it is, it, it is out there somewhere. Um, Maybe just even from if, someone else. Yeah. Yeah. Quite possibly. Um, uh, and then in terms of the music, I possibly do have them, but I think it could be like just the MP3s, like this, you know, fairly compressed versions of the entire soundtrack. Um, I thought I had shared that, but maybe not the, and maybe I don't have the the sort of like the full forty eight k versions of them. So you only have Atlantis as MP three, or possibly I'll, I'll have to because you you had Creature from the Krusty Krab as WAV. Which is yeah. much higher quality than MP3, but mm. so if you yeah, have that I'm for not... Atlantis too, that would be nice. But uh, yeah, I'll, I'll I'll look into it. My feeling is that it was something that I'd I'd sent, but that the WAVs were weren't like the sort of 48k versions. That it was a sort of potentially wav of of something at a lower sample rate but i can't quite remember oh it's okay if it's not forty-eight thousand. like that's not the 
the really the big deal. The big deal is mm-hmm. kind of having it without ambience, I guess. Mm-hmm. So if you have, you never sent anything from Atlantis. You only sent things from creature from the Krusty Krab. Okay. 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 Well, I'll have a look, and if there's some um, the stuff that's kicking around, I can I'll send it over to you. All right. I wanted to ask one more thing about Atlantis, and that was. So in, in Creature from the Krusty Krab, for the uh, title screen, you kind of used the SpongeBob theme motif mm-hmm. for the title screen. And um, that was kind of it. No other music s- seemed to really use it. But mm-hmm. in Atlantis, yeah. there were, I think, two or three tracks that ended up using it aside from the title screen and so i wanted to ask why is that i'm not sure to be honest with you. i think back in when i was doing it um yeah I to be honest with you, i'm not sure <laughs> maybe just with with the first one it sort of Maybe the themes of the levels were quite strong, so they they needed their own own bits of music, and it, you couldn't really get that SpongeBob motif into them. Um, and maybe with with Atlantis, it was slightly easier to do that. I'm not sure. I don't have a, I don't have a it great does, answer. It, it kind of uh, you know it gets changed up a little bit, but it is there. So that was just interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I, it wasn't a deliberate um, decision to feature it more often. I think it was probably by coincidence that it just it just happened to to sort of creep in there a bit more. I, I also thought it was kind of interesting because in Battle for Bikini Bottom, it it never got used, and then the game right after that, the the movie game. It got used quite a bit as well. Mm-hmm. I, I think know. I'm not sure. I mean, I, it's sort of you know, it's quite a recognizable bit of music. So it does. It's one of those things that you know you can't. I don't think you can use it too often. Otherwise, it it becomes a bit like repetitive and annoying. But in the title music, yes, and then. You know, dropping it occasionally seems to make sense to me at like sort of key moments. That could be it. Yeah, that makes sense. But I'd, I can't, but I can't remember any sort of. Oh well, I'll definitely use this more on this game. I don't remember any any decision like that. So next, I wanted to ask some questions about Zapper. Okay. Yeah. So... You said that um, at Blitz Games, you kind of had a big room. Well, maybe not a big, but you had a room to yeah. make the music. And there were the four of you there. Um, with Zappa, there was four of us, yes. Yeah, and that was in quite but a small room. Yeah. In, in, in the, um, the credits, it says that the music was mastered somewhere called gig house that's correct yeah but in no other game it doesn't mention anywhere of where it's mastered so was was gig house kind of a part of blitz games or gig house is a recording studio um like in uh close proximity to where blitz games was based in leamington spa in warwickshire in england and um we decided to get the tracks mastered there um, because, well, first of all, it I don't know. I think I thought it was like important at the time to like get a get all of the tracks consistently uh, at the same volume for a start because there was me, there was John, and then there was Jez, and there was Andy Morris. So there's a there's a lot of different people working on music on that game, and a lot of the tracks were quite different, really. 
So the idea was that we'll, we'll master them all. <clears throat> so there's a level of consistency throughout. So that, that was the plan. And I think it cost us like 250 quid to do them, which i um, not sure if that's expensive or cheap for back then. But it was it was a good thing to do. Um, and I'm not sure why we didn't do it on subsequent games, to be honest with you. We probably should have done. Uh, we ended up sort of doing the mastering ourselves. But there you go. Not really. I don't... Quid is... I don't know how much oh, sorry, that's um that's so yeah well now that's almost like 250 dollars because the the pound and the dollar are like almost equal oh. Oh. it was like a day's work in not quite a day's work almost a day's work in the studio i guess maybe that's why i noticed something about kind of the, the files you sent for Zapper and the files from the game is that um, the in the game the the volume was kind of just like flat yeah and from the files you sent it was a little more oh that's interesting consistent I wonder first, then sorry go first, on I think I also wanted to ask you this. The, from the name of the folder you sent, was Zapper's music on a CD? Yeah, which I would have thought that they would have been the same mastered tracks, which would have been the same ones in the game. So it's interesting that the rips from the game and the tracks are the tracks I sent you are different. I, I was kind of worried that like maybe they weren't as loud because the CD has been had been damaged or something or no I mean they were but I don't know I'm not sure of the where that folder came from originally I mean it, it like at a guess they were kept on on a disc and then but they would have been kept on like disc as data rather than like um, an audio CD and then just sort of taken off that. Oh, so you, you didn't have the CD. You, you just had a folder called yeah, yeah. CD. Yeah, yeah. I was going to kind of ask if, if I could see the CD. but No, unfortunately not. No, no such thing exists. Um, how long do you think it took to finish Zapper's music? Um, I can't remember. I mean, it must have been maybe I was probably working on it for like seven or eight months, maybe something like that. The maybe game, the longer. game came out. 2002 yeah I think, or maybe it was 2001 I don't remember but um let's have a look yeah I mean I I started I started work at Blitz in 2002 <laughs> so um okay, so, so I don't probably know probably not 2001 then 2002 uh it does yeah it, set, it came out according to Google on October the 9th, 2002. And I, my start date at Blitz, I think was in that year, but it was, maybe it was in 2000, maybe I started in 2001. But anyway, but I, I think roughly, yeah, like maybe seven, eight, a seven, less eight, than seven, a year. eight, yeah, le le less than a year, definitely. Yeah. I, I just think that's incredible. <laughs> You guys can get so much music done in that much time. It's there was a lot of music, yeah, um, and and like I say, all of, all of that game music was all just created in everyone's just like sit wearing headphones. So you know, we we weren't creating music in a sort of 
proper studio with speakers and like properly acoustically treated rooms um it was all quite rough and ready uh and i seem to remember that because <clears throat> i'd i'd just started and i didn't really have any like equipment or that much software even and a lot of the music was created in some in a program called acid which was um uh like quite a limited bit of software but yeah yeah it was most of it was done in that and then i think later on we were using uh logic um yeah so it was a mixture of acid something called reason and then logic later in the day before logic stopped being on pc and then became mac only so then how, how did you guys go about like i think you've said that there's some live recorded guitar or bass mm. on zapper how did you guys go about recording that like i for the guitar i recorded that not in the room at blitz i recorded that i was living um actually back in my parents house at the time and i recorded that at their house in like um in like the music room which which they had um uh on guitar i i play guitar in with my amp and i recorded it onto what was i using i think i might have been i can't quite remember what i actually recorded it onto maybe it was onto onto um like mini disc maybe i was using using a like a, a microphone record onto mini disc playing to a click track so i knew um what the tempo of the song was going to be record the guitar part and then when i get back into the office i could then take that mini track mini disc recording and put it into the computer and then uh muck around with it so like really long-winded process of of getting the guitars in there same with the bass do you think it was worth the effort? Oh yeah, like because I think the, I think there's some live piano as well, especially on the um, the title track, the dun 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 dun. That's um, that's a bit of of like live piano, and not right piano as well. Um, but I think yeah, because if it was just just the sort of samples and just the um, sort of virtual instruments. It doesn't quite have that same sort of slightly loose feeling that you sometimes get when when you can kind of add live instruments into into bits of music. Sorry about that. Um, it's okay. Um, <clears throat> I wanted to ask. Um, did you make the music for the intro and outro scenes in Zapper? The the cutscenes. Yeah. Uh, yes, I did. Yeah, I d yeah, I did those. Yeah. Um, did they? I think. Oh. Sorry, uh, go on. I was. Did were they like? Because it kind of sounded like they were very based on the. The laser maze or the early title screen so yeah. did you like kind of make something new but base it off of that or just kind of take parts of that and i think i think it? i it was yeah the latter i took parts of the off like other title track or the laser maze and like kind of used those samples of like of, of the music that had been created and put those against the cutscene. Because like the cutscene was created right at the end of the project, so like all of the music was done. So it was either well, I could write something new, or actually this will work, hopefully quite nicely. Because like the the intro scene kind of has like some new parts. It kind of sounds like yeah, like right at the end, there's kind of a a little sting. I don't know that yeah like, yeah there was not, the... not really a sting a hit that's yeah not really used anywhere else yeah there's there's definitely new bits i, I remember 
you know, you had to add a little bit extra in for that one. Um, and then but it, the outro scene, the very start, just kind of used a little bit of the the boss music, also mm -hmm. the Vista Magpie, and yeah, then. And then it just kind of used the drums of the, of the uh, title screen. Yeah. yeah, I remember that one now. Yeah, I think that was that was because it was like, oh, well, you've just done the boss battle, so it was like kind of a reminder of of what you've just been listening to, and kind of made sense to continue that bit of music on, and then, yeah, and then I, I remember just reusing those drums because it seemed like you could call back to the to the previous thing to the start of the game there's also like i said there was a um kind of a leak of an earlier version of the game and mm. those also had early versions of the cutscenes and the second the, the outro cutscene didn't have audio but the first one did and the music sounded kind of different yeah, I don't remember though. I don't remember doing that first cutscene. Um, I guess. Yeah, it may have. Yeah, it's interesting that 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 got leaked because I, <laughs> I, I had no idea that even existed. Like some of that stuff. I mean, I I I remember writing it. Well, I mean, of you know, course. I must have written it. But like, <laughs> but <laughs> but yeah, it's kind of bizarre that it that it sort of gets out there. It's it's lucky too because otherwise, it just wouldn't exist. Yeah, really. yeah, because you don't yeah. have it anymore. Yeah. Said. Mm. No, like I say, I don't. But you know, I, I'm sure that every project um, from Blitz has an archive, and somewhere, someone has a huge archive of of all of the kind of audio um stuff it's just, just a case of i'm not who really sure who i would ask really yeah other than you <laughs> yeah I, I have i have kind of me me and someone else have been trying to kind of ask the other three composers about it i i got in contact with jez corley oh yeah and I sent him a few questions over email. Yeah. He said he would get back to me eventually about it. But okay. Of course, Andy Morris, not even you, really ha have any contact. No, I don't. No, no. I mean, like, I th yeah, I haven't got a contact uh, for him, unfortunately. Um I think he's still working in video games, but I'm I'm not sure where he is. I've sort of lost contact with him, unfortunately. And I I already have contact with John Guscott, so mm -hmm. next time I talk to him, I could ask him about it. But so yeah. maybe they could have more stuff. They might do. Know. They might do. It depends. I mean, like sort of for me, you know, I sort of worked on the project. I've got the original I mean the the you know the music that you that you find in the game um and beyond that that's that's kind of it but I suppose that's you know cuz all of those the the project files that would have had the stems and all of the all of the kind of individual bits of each of the pieces of music are long gone on a, a computer somewhere years ago and at the time yeah I didn't need to archive that stuff. Um, so I kind of wanted to ask, um, you, you mentioned that Asta La Vista Magpie had to be changed a lot because it sounded like Duel of the Fates. Yeah. But I was kind of curious why you guys were able to get away with the um, sp spook, spookville tracks, the the high intensity sounding like 
Ghost Riders in the Sky. That was it. Oh yeah. Well, that's that's John Guscott did that one. Yeah. But... So don't sue me, please. Um, how do we get away with it? I think probably because it wasn't as an obvious piece of music as the Jewel of the Fates is. So, um, I mean, in the throughout that game, there were a bunch of songs that kind of had a little reference, a little nod to something else. Um, like, for example, the I think it's the sawmill. There's a variation of the sawmill that sounds, or I like, I created to sound very much like. Um, there's a film called Vertigo, and there's the title music of Vertigo by Bernard Herrmann. The and the file name of one of them was just called Vertigo, or I had yeah. Vertigo in it. I mean, so yeah, and huh. um, the that was, you know, I remember writing that as a as a direct reference as a because you were so high up so it was kind of like a joke you're high up you're getting vertigo oh and it's also referencing this piece of music called from the film vertigo <clears throat> but i think that one and and then the one that john did like i say they're slightly more obscure pieces of music and i don't i mean they were sort of not it's like a nod like a reference to it rather than trying to copy it exactly and then with the Asta La Vizza one Asta La Vizza I should say Jez possibly copied it too much <laughs> so and because it's a far more famous piece of music um, it was probably wise that we we didn't put it out there otherwise the, the lawyers would have not been too happy I think there was one very obvious reference in the the um, crazy apiary track. I think there's just a slight reference to Flight of the Bumblebee. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. That, I mean, that was that. I mean, that is but... Flight, Flight of the Bumblebee. Um, and I think that that was kind of okay because maybe it's because outside that... of copyright that piece of music was outside of copyright um, and it was a new arrangement of of that tune so I think that was kind of like basically fair game but um, I mean I remember working on um, Fairly Odd Parent 2 I think it was and there's um, a, a level where um the main timmy the main character like can turn into a dog called dog's life and i wanted to use um how much is that doggy in the window and like kind of like but do like a fairly odd parents version of of that song um uh but it turned out that we couldn't do that and because that song was still in copyright uh and like i we had to change it completely uh, yeah, there was another one that I did as well, but, <laughs> that, but I can't quite remember what that was. But these things happen, unfortunately. Like sometimes you think a thing is okay to reference, and then it turns out that you definitely can't reference it. I've had I've had people kind of ask me to ask you about the Fairly Odd Parents games music, not anything specific, but just like for the files of them oh, yeah. and, I, and I, that kind of made me I, I was planning on playing the game sometime since I had music by you but yeah. um, I thought it was kind of interesting that you said that there was going to be a third game and that you made mm. music for it so maybe, maybe it, it uh, would be neat I have you... yeah I think I have Hmm, do I have that? I might have that somewhere. I've got the boss music um, for it, definitely. Whether I've got the level music or not, I'm sure. In fact, there was a piece... There was a piece that John did, that John Guscott did for it. 
think he did it for that one where um he basically created like a samba piece of music so lots and lots of percussion and he played all the bits of yeah all, all of the bits of percussion himself um uh, i remember him recording that um so he might have that i guess if you're in contact with john you might ask him about that piece of music um but yeah i'll, I'll see if i've got the the fairly odd parents three um tracks there was like a pirate one and like i say this um boss which was like a the idea was that this kind of a, an anti-santa um so like instead of like being like giving presents he's like taking all the presents off um <laughs> and like so yeah so that was going to be the thing um yeah so if, I, if i'll dig it out and i can i'll, I'll send it over so I, I always think it's kind of interesting maybe like you know, even though the game didn't exist, so nobody would really care about the game. But since it's a part of a, a franchise, I think people would still be interested in it. Yeah. Yeah, it's in, I, I, the franchise. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think. Yeah, it was a kind of it was kind of a shame that it it got canned because I think the 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 boss level would have been quite funny. Um, but yeah, I think these things happen. Um, I think that's it. Mm. Your internet is frozen again. I'm just going to um, disconnect and dial back. <laughs> that better yes it is thank you i it just oh. sort of froze for a second there. i was i was just saying i think that's it i've said all my questions cool okay um yeah <clears throat> well thank you uh it's it like you know it's nice that that all these projects that we did so long ago like that people are into them uh it's, quite, it's good i like i like it uh because it's it's stuff that you know was was right at the start of of when I started working in video games. So I've got a lot of um, you know nostalgia for them, but also like good memories of working on those projects. So it is it is nice to sort of think back and and sort of discuss them and dig into them and you know remember those times. Uh, and it, what like I said earlier, working in that department with with John and with Todd and there was Rob Blake and. Ed Hargrave and Rich Blackley and Simon Barford and um, you know like a bunch of really talented people it was like good fun working with them so nice to think back to those times and, and you made great stuff out of that time too yeah, yeah thank you yeah yeah no it's um yeah it was they're like I say they were good projects to work on fun times mm -hmm. well, th thank you for answering my questions and if you get the time I would really appreciate if you sent the Atlantis files and yeah I'll, 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 I'll dig into the Atlantis it. yeah I'll dig into that and see if um if that stuff um if that stuff exists I think like you say your friend the the, the other guy I was, I was talking to about it I'm sure there was a back and forth about the Atlantis ones and um i'm not sure i've got exactly what you're after i think it might just be the stuff with the um with the ambiences layered into the music as well unfortunately but i'll i'll i'll, I'll have a look now you've reminded me and then i'll see if i can find the fairly odd parents um stuff as well so does does that mean that you you made the ambience for atlantis then as well i think todd did those Todd Baker, because um, he was doing most of the sound effects. And it was basically because that game came out on like pretty old consoles, you know, where they didn't have a lot of um, memory for sound effects. So having very long 
ambiences like you know three four minutes of ambience wouldn't have been able to fit into the the sound memory of the console so that's why they're sort of included on the music then why why did you have them saved like that then I, i think that was i basically just got those files are everything that just went into the game and that's probably as much as i've got as a as a archive of them i mean i i suppose it would still be better to to have even if they have the ambience in them they would still be higher quality than they are in the game but... yeah they should they yes possibly unless they're the ones that literally were literally the ones that went onto the game i.e they'd be down at 22k or something but, but um if i'll you, have a if you I'll, have them without yeah. the ambience that would be much much That'd better be, yeah yeah I'll, I'll have a look and see if i can find that stuff so th- thank you for being here and yeah uh, yeah you're welcome i really <clears> enjoyed <throat> talking to you oh thank you yeah it's been fun uh i'll let you get on with your is it very late or is it very middle of the day where you are it's one t- one twenty p.m right now okay cool right well enjoy the rest of your day and um you too i'll uh i'll oh, well, no doubt be in, be have in a contact. good night i guess <laughs> yeah okay all right thanks ever so much goodbye see ya bye wow <laughs> can't believe i did that that was incredible so just gotta change the credits of Creature from the Krusty Krab, remove John from all the tracks, and remove Todd Baker from Hypnotic Highway. Possibly the Atlantis files don't exist anymore. Um, and oh, what else did we talk about? Fairly Odd Parents 3. <laughs> Who knows what that's about. All right.